Hello and welcome to the first version of Easy Video Lab. Now, this is really just a renamed version of the original app Kinetic Text Animator. All updates are still free and all that kind of stuff. We're just renaming the application to reflect a broader vision. The original concept for Kinetic Text Animator was to make text animation videos very simple. You just would put plunk in your text in one of these animations over here and hit animate it and then go. Now it's of course it's oversimplifying a little bit but the bottom line is what we've decided that we wanted to do is kind of expand the power of Easy Video Lab Kinetic Text Animator into not just text animations but broaden it into the other kind of natural components that you'd want to include in a video. So in this version the two new things are features anyways are MOV overlay and layered image which I'll share with you in a second. There's also some improvements to make the overall editing of the program uh, or, or of templates and, and a video much easier, as I'll share with you here. I want the MOV overlay. I happen to click on the, uh, the layered image, but the MOV overlay is, is, is more demonstrated in this particular sample. Now, I do apologize. The only samples I currently have are from an upcoming product, a cartoon kit, uh, Easy Video Templates cartoon kit, just because this is new to us as well. This is a template in that kit, and it, I just want to demonstrate that what you have here in this sample is an animated background, a static uh, character here, then an animation, this cartoon caption, and then the text animation. So we have four elements here. So we now have the ability to include QuickTime MOV files with transparency in Easy Video Lab. Now what happens is the MOV file is converted to a PNG sequence on the fly when you import it. And that's important to mention because Windows users, many will have been dealing with the fact that Apple stopped supporting QuickTime MOV on Windows as of April 2016. So various programs have kind of had on and off capabilities to work with them. Camtasia for a while couldn't, and then they solved that problem in a very similar fashion to how we solved it, and so forth. So now another problem with QuickTime MOV files was the difficulty in previewing them. So what we've done is with ours, as we've basically built in a, a better previewing system. Unfortunately, there's a small bug that I'm, I'll be showing you here, but uh, I'd rather show you that the benefits and then we'll fix the, the problems. Here in a new version, many of you will know that we update very frequently and regularly. What we're looking at here is the ability to preview these and add them so I can replace that MOV file if I want to, I would need to, to delete the block and then add it again, but I can still add this from to the timeline from here. The problem uh, that we're actually seeing, you may not see it, but is that I can't, uh, the, these animations just happen to be so tall that they, they kind of remove the space necessary to see the playback. So we'll fix that here in an upcoming release. But what's kind of innovative about this is Carvel pointed out that we can convert to the WebM format and have a preview for the QuickTime MOV files. Most people use a GIF animation and that GIF animation is sometimes two, three, four times bigger than the MOV file, which is pretty large as it is. This a particular one, for example, as you can see is 23.5 megabytes. Unfortunately, QuickTime MOV files are kind of large files. They're not compressed as well and so forth. The benefits, of course, are that, that the black area here is transparent and making it easier to integrate with other video elements. So what we've done here, Carvel's done, is the WebM previews are automatically recognized if the name is the same as the MOV file. And that allows us to load these faster and take up a lot less resources on your local hard drive. It's an innovation that really no one is doing right now. Our QuickTime MOV files that are part of our assets are all going to have that WebM preview, allowing you to preview the asset from within the application so that you can more quickly and easily find something that you need, swap it out, and move on. Now that same general concept has been implemented with the image animations. You'll see this character right here, and it's a static MOV that's been animated, I'm sorry, a static uh, PNG that's been animated with the image animation uh, feature. Let me go ahead and click on that character there, and you can see there's basically the settings. Now I could uh, browse for an image here, but I can also come over here and do that. Let's say, for example, that I like this template, but I wanted to have something like sad or instead. Maybe I'm telling, are you upset about the fact that you can't 
do Facebook ads very well, or whatever you're you're doing, you want to be able to quickly and easily uh, make this template fit your needs. So what we've done is you can do a, a keyword search for an expression that matches your needs, and go ahead and do a search for that. And then you can basically go, okay, well here's here's a good one. I'm going to click on that, and it swaps it in there with the animation uh, still there and everything. So basically you can very quickly and easily customize not just the text but also the image and the animations in the video. If this video didn't match my needs, for example, I could go up here to this and do maybe um, do frustrated. Um, I could do sad too but I'll just do a different word. I don't have to do the full word and then uh, it will come up with some video stuff and I could replace that as well. So all of the elements, uh, what we're basically doing is we're moving towards the easy ability to swap, you know, keyword search for assets that meet your needs and have the easy ability to swap them into a template or just, you know, st when, if you're starting from scratch. The other feature that I, I want to demonstrate for you is the layered image feature that's new as well. Now, this feature um, is basically, uh, you know, it, it may feel like, oh, what's the big deal? It's a static image. It's what it is. But the value of that, let's go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do it, uh, load a different template. And I'm just going to load in, uh, really, there's only a few that I've got so far that demonstrate this because this is a brand new feature even for me. Uh, let's go here and just look at the contents of this template. Now what we have is a static image of this, uh, this uh, woman character. We have a frame here. That's this right here, and that's a layered image, and it's just a static PNG image with kind of a hole right here showing through to this. Let me see. We got a sprinkled text animation that is within that hole or that frame. We got this hand animation using image animation, and then finally we have another version of the layered image that serves as the background. And really, it only it, this this kind of striped texture is what's showing through. The rest of it's covered with the uh, frame right here. So what this allows us to do is create a couple things. One, this frame, you know, we have the video going on within the frame. Let me go ahead and play this video so you see what's going on. So that motion is taking in place all within the frame and this this character here and this animation are taking place outside of the frame. And so it's just kind of a more layered, interesting approach, more depth to the video and so forth. Now, many of you will say, well, wasn't that possible with image animation? And no, it was not. Um, there was a, an appear function. Go ahead and click on the character here so we can see that. So there was a, a appear function here. But unfortunately, the, in order for it to appear, there st had, still had to be a static or, I mean, a, a, a nothing there to begin with. And then for it to appear, that's just how the code, uh, the technology worked. And so Carvel needed to create a separate technology to display static images. So you can import SP, uh, PNGs or JPEGs. Both of these happen to be PNGs. Uh, in this case, Carvel is looking into uh, the ability to use SVG images, which will have to be converted on the fly to bitmap, but at least we'll be able to keyword search for PNGs and add them also. And so uh, there's there's just a bunch of you know uses here for this, but uh, this is a simple example of the use of that. And all of this is really just designed to make to increase the, the capability for creating videos but still keep it relatively easy and uh, attainable for average everyday users so that's pretty much what uh, easy video lab has i'm sorry for this walkthrough being a little longer than most of them but there was more to show you just want to let you know that i will be updating the tutorials completely as soon as possible you'll start to see that even today but it will take me a while because there's a lot to redo now that we are an easy video lab instead of kinetic text animator thanks a lot for your support for your suggestions and for checking out this video